So, part two. Um, let's go. Um, Destia 1. So, uh, Destia, you, Destia is an undead enemy. Uh, he will always start cast by casting dark. And that's why you have to have your battle speed to as slow as like a low. Um, items are instant, so they don't get slowed down by the battle speed. But just the charge time of dark will get get will get a lot slow, lot longer. So you have enough time to kill him before he kills you, basically. Uh, Dusty Eye is undead enemy who spawns when your HP is below 10% of your maximum HP. And um, he, he is not, he's a rare game. Actually, let's... Like, let's go here. You can see from one Dusty Eye, I, I, I got from level 1 to level 5. That's how much XP he gives. And... Uh, then Dustia has two drops, Book of Regain and Flamestaff. Book of Regain is 532 gil and Flamestaff is 1200 gil. So it's a lot of gil at this point. Each Dusty also gives 3 LP and yeah, 1000 XP. So it's very efficient farm. Uh, the only problem is that you need Phoenix Downs to kill him. So, each time you cons consume an HP, or you consume a Phoenix Down, that's why we needed 8 Phoenix Downs. So, to kill 8 Dustia, and that those 8 Dustia will bring Vaughn from level 1 to level 11. So, 10 levels from 8 enemies killed. Um, so, the trick to Dustia is that he's a rare game who's not supposed to respawn after you kill him once. Uh, until you have left the whole Lester Sand, or Western Sand, sorry. <clears throat> and there was a Flame Staff, which was a really nice drop. Uh, so the trick is that you have to leave before Dustia's death animation is complete. So, and that is pretty fast. So you have to be really fast picking up the drop and uh, leaving the zone. Uh, it's much, it's very lenient, or it's fairly lenient in uh, Dustia 1, but it will get uh, tighter on Dustia 2, but we'll talk about it more when we get there. And yes, there will be, there will be Dustia 2, which will be a little bit different from Dustia 1 in a couple of ways. So then about the timing of Dustia, um, Dustia 1 uh, is done here, because done right now, because right now Vaughn is alone in the party, and uh, soon you will start getting more party members, and the party members levels are determined once they join your party, and they are based on Vaughn's level, so... Uh, So uh, Vaughn's, so leveling up Vaughn will effectively level up everyone. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to grab my water. I'll be right back. Never mind, it was right here. I just couldn't see it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, eventually we will get more party members, and that's why we're doing Dustia now. And that was a Dustia, so. I actually forgot what drops those were, but at least there were at least two books and one staff, so that was pretty good. So, uh, this wolf here. Typically, this wolf is much closer to here, and he can launch you, and if he launches you, he will kill you. Um... So if 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 that wolf is close, definitely throw a potion at you. That's why you want to keep potions. That's the for what the second potion is for when you uh have the low HP on. And well, if you don't have a potion then just try to go around him. 
Um, and so that he can't reach you with the lunch. I like the Zodiac Age. It's I think it's a good remake, especially casually. Speedrun wise, it's a little bit meh, but uh, casually it's very fun. I think. So. Um. Right, after Dastia we start heading uh, towards the Garamsite waterway and the fastest way there is through the southern plaza and then the... Is it south end or east end? I think it's... Uh, east end, yeah. And then here, from here you get to Low Town. Yeah, there's... Uh, yes, this is my world record. Then you go around the corner and run through North Sproul. And get here, talk to Kites, who gives you two fi two potions and four eye drops. <clears throat> and we get to Garamsite Waterway. And the goal for the next two areas are or is to uh, gather enough gill so we can kill 39 Dastia later on. And 39 Dastia means 39 Phoenix Downs, which is 9750 gill. Which is a lot more than what we needed for the tier 1. So here we can see Vaughn's stats. They are again random. Uh, the HP and MP. HP and MP are the only uh, stats that are random. All the other ones are fixed. Uh, so Vaughn's MP is 49. I consider 49 to be okay. It's, I think it's a little bit of above average. But 49 is a nice number for Vaughn. Uh, HP hardly matters. It's always around the same and uh, having 5 or 10 HP more doesn't really make a difference for Vaughn. But uh, the 49 MP is okay. He can have like more, he can have like up to, I think the biggest I've seen on Vaughn is like 53, maybe 52. And um, the lowest is around 45, 44, maybe even. So here's a chest that can contain an eater. Uh, if you if you're new, I would definitely recommend picking up this chest for the eater. Uh, I still I some I also if your guild is low, I would recommend picking this up. Uh, and this chest can be a remedy or an antidote. But the remedy remedy sells for two hundred gil, so that's pretty nice to get for that. Uh, but again, here my gil is good enough that I won't go for it. It's not the greatest chest because the remedy is not not the most common item. I don't know what the exact percent is, but um, it is not that common to get the remedy. And uh, use if it's not a remedy, it's usually pretty bad chest. There's also a chest right here, like, it's out of the site, but on the map it would be around here. And uh, that chest can contain a phoenix down. Again, I would pick it up if my uh, gill was worse, but that's good enough. Uh, there's also another chest over, like, in that corner. Over there. Uh, that, ca that chest can contain an eater as well, but that's usually hardly ever worth it. And there's also a chest over there that can contain something, but I don't even remember what it is. I think it's a phoenix down that it can contain, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, also in this game, there are the, or in this room, there are these Icton type enemies. 
Uh, they are neutral, as you can see from the green HP bar. But if uh, if there's a Razor Fin around, uh, or they can a Razor Fin can spawn instead of one of them. There are four of them. Razor Fin is a rare game. I won't talk about it too much, but he's annoying in that he can poison you. Uh, if he poisons Vaughn, it's usually pretty annoying. But he didn't spawn. He he has about one in three chance to spawn. Or like 35% to be more ex more accurate. 10% for each Icton. Yeah, then you just run run here to the palace. Also, you want to have the curse after Dustia. You want to have your cursor on uh, gambits. So now in this room, there are four chests that are worth noting. The first one is here. First one I'll pick up. The second one is here on the map. It has a it has a chance of being either remedy or ninety gil. Uh, or Remedy or 100 gil, I believe. Uh, it can be either one of those. Uh, there's another chest that can spawn here. It didn't spawn right now. That chest can contain an antidote. But um, just note that um, there can be another chest here as well. It's not worth picking up. But that, that chest that's further, that, can con that contains an elixir. It's always an elixir. It's 90% chance to spawn. And elixir... It is part of the Zodiac Age chests, but we don't pick up Zodiac, or sorry, not Zodiac Age, Zodiac Spear, Zodiac Spear chest, and you want, you want to, you, we don't need the Zodiac Spear, so, uh, we can, the Elixir is much more worth it for us in the speedrun, and yeah, it, after that, if you, if your money was not good, like, my money in my PB was really good, or not not really good, but it was good. So I decided to skip the one chest that's over here and one chest that's over there. Uh, that chest was a remedy, like I said, and that chest would be an eater. I, did, I decided to skip those chests. There's also a chest over here that can spawn, that can contain a... E or sorry. It's over here. Never mind. It's either a Phoenix down or a 90 gil. But after... Uh, so what the optimal route if you pick up all the chests would be to pick up the elixir first, then the remedy, then this phoenix down, and then go for the eater. It it looks a little bit of a weird route, but that's fastest. I've timed it. But yeah, after. After that, um, you have to go here. The Aether chest would be right there. But you would have already picked it up if you were at this point. But I'm just pointing out where it is exactly. So here you have to press square to talk to, the, to attract that guard. And then we have the guard puzzle. It is very simple. Just follow, just do what I do. And you'll be fine. So, uh, first up is the, you run here. You need to be, I mean, even if you're not doing optimal movement, you have to at least be more than halfway on this side of the room to get the guards attracted. So it's, it's not really, really precise, but you, you just can't do whatever. Also here you have to go at least half, at least more than halfway of this, uh, the center of this uh, hallway, hallway's length. Oh yeah, it's not a guard, it's a bucket head, right? And here you have to go at least halfway through this uh, corridor. So it's, it's right where, at right at the halfway of this point that you have to pass to shout. 
I went a little bit further to like just to be safe, not to shout uh, and waste ex not to shout extra time and waste like five seconds. And then you go here and talk and uh, use the crescent stone here. Uh, there's an alternative alternative way that is equally as fast, and that that way would um, instead of going there, you would run here and shout to discard from here and then run back uh, using the crescent stone either on the way in or way out. Either way, and then go the other way to this um, to this uh, fake wall. Or suspicious wall, or faint light, or whatever it's called. One of those is correct. I know which one. It's the whatever kappa. Anyway, uh, you go and um, press this switch in the corner. It's hidden, but it is there. It's always there. And then you examine the suspicious wall to uh, leave. And then there, there was also a cutscene skips there. Uh, but yeah, the 7 second rule works there as well. There was also like, there was a cutscene and then you mash X. X for um... Whatever. X for uh, what's it called? To get rid of the text box. There's also there was also a seven. I'll go back a little bit. There was also a seven second rule. Uh, cutscene skips there, and here you want to do this a little bit of a prep up. You uh, turn off France gambits and then switch your cursor to techniques. You have very little time if you and if you can't do it, it's no big deal. You can just just as well do it after the tutorial here. But yeah, there's the Gambit tutorial. It's just mashing X, but you have to, you can't zone, you can't just zone out too much because you have to press circle twice, first there and then again here. And then after this uh, tutorial, you have to menu because you have to do the menu after the tutorial because otherwise you don't have gambits unlocked yet. They only unlock after the tutorial. So yeah, uh, now the first real menu. So, or the first peak menu. It's not big compared to other menus, but you do more than two things in this menu. Uh, so first is you turn up battle speed. You go licenses, you license white magic one and black magic one for Vaughn. And uh, if you want to, you can you you can uh, zoom out the license, license board here as well, as I do. Uh, zooming out uh, it makes it makes licensing a little bit more difficult, but it makes moving in the license board a little bit faster. Then gambits, you want Vaughn to have four nearest visible steel. Or sorry, four nearest visible Phoenix Town. That's the first mistake I make in, made in the run. Uh, let's go back. That should be Phoenix Town, that should not be steel. And then... Um, that's really fast, but uh, I'll try to show it again here. 
uh, go to switch to Fran, press select to get rid of the first uh, gambit. And same thing for both switch to Balfier, press select again to get rid of his uh, first gambit. And then switch the other one to faux party leaders targets, target steal. And then I correct the mistake I make, made. But yeah, that's the first real mistake that my run did. Other time losses and gains for up to this point were just RNG. So here... Um, uh, we used to kill and uh, kill a lot of bats and stuff here. Now, only thing I do is I flee until I'm close to the, these last bats. And then I t tell Balfier to steal from a bat. And then I tell, steal, tell a friend to steal from another bat. The bats are the stealings. So I told Balfier to steal from stealing C. And I'm going to tell Bal Fran to steal from stealing B. Doesn't matter which bats. But you can see I stole a teleport stone. The teleport stone is pretty useful. It saves 10 seconds. Um, or about 10 seconds later on. And uh, other things bats can have are arm guards and uh, bat fangs. Bat fangs sell for 105 gil and arm guard is 400 gil, if I recall correctly. So those are pretty valuable steals compared to like what we had before just year one where the best things we got were 105 gil. The Iron Guard, Iron Guard is very rare though, usually you get bad fangs. But it's fine. Uh, then there's then there's this Gigantode, you want to actually kill that one. Uh, by using fire from Vaughn, I wait until Balthier still starts casting and then tell Fran to start using fire as well. Uh, you wait so that Balfir can actually get the steal off. If you're super good at money, you don't even have to do that. Uh, but you can steal either horn, uh, it's horn twenty gil or lead, or sorry, horn fifty gil, or a leather shield, or not leather helm. Leather helm sells for two hundred and fifty gil. Horn sells for hundred and under hundred and twenty gil. And 50, 50 gil is 50 gil. And then there are two chests over here. Uh, this first chest uh, is either antidote or longsword. The longsword sells for 350 gil, and I would, uh, and the antidote sells for 25 gil. It can also be gil. And the other chest that could spawn right next to it uh, could contain an escutcheon, and that's the only item you can get from that chest. So. Escuchen, as you might remember, sells 450 gil. And there was a 50 gil steal. Also, you can if if the drops if the frogs drop something, you can switch your party leader back and um, pick up the drop. Like you could like you could switch your party leader back to both here, pick up the drop and switch back to Vaughn. But the frog drops are not really great. Like they usually are bad. So I hardly ever bother with them. And then I skip the last Gigantode because Fran is so much behind, I'm just not gonna bother with that. And also I need the MP for the next fights. So I don't have to touch the uh, save crystal over here for MP. Here you want your gambit, your thing to be on. Uh... Oh, <clears throat> let's go back. Yeah, you want you want it to be on fire, and here you can see the MP, MP values. They are actually important. Uh, 
Balfir has 40 MP. It doesn't matter right now, but it matters. Um, it matters for the Mimic Queen fight. Uh, Balfir, as long as it's 40 or above, you're fine. You don't have to worry about Balfir's MP. If it's less than 40, like sometimes I've seen him with 4 39 MP. 39 MP, then uh, he will be short of one, short, one cast short, and you have to do something to fix that. Usually, switch leader to both here and running circles, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, so, Fran's MP is 48, which is l pretty low for Fran. Fran usually has like 50. Um, 51 or above is pretty nice value for Va Fran, for reasons I will explain a lot later. Uh, and Vaughn's MP, well, yeah. Oh, actually Fran was not full on HP and she got the 49th MP. Usually when a character is not full on MP and... Uh, and they don't and they don't regenerate an MP just before the fight. They will regenerate an MP right at the start of the fight. Uh, no, MP, HP and MP are not consistent. Uh, so you start the fight by spamming fire on the first guard. And, uh, and there are four guards in this fight. Each guard gives you uh, two LP. And then there's Amalia, or... As we know her now, question mark, question mark, question mark, over here. And she is not in your party. So if she gets the finishing blow on any of these guards, you will not gain that 2 LP. And while 2 LP doesn't, si doesn't sound like it's the most bad thing in the world, it's still annoying because you have to make up the LP calculations or L LP routing is so precise. You have to do something extra if you miss, miss out on 2 LP here. Later on it wouldn't be a big deal, but here it's a little bit. So again, you use fire with Vaughn and Fran and Balfir will steal. Again, Fran, you can delay Fran's uh, fire, first fire a little bit just to make sure that Balfir gets the first steal off. You can steal potion, phoenix downs or some like 100 gil I believe is the last steal. Uh, from these guys. Also, as as previously in the uh, in the fight, in the guards fight, these guys have different amount of HP. I believe this guy is guard A, or maybe it's this this guy. I'm I'm actually not sure. But you want to leave guard A to la uh, to be the last guard you kill, so that uh. So that the uh, Amalia will get at least one hit off on uh, that guard. Because uh, that guard is a damage roll and you want you want Amal other if you get the damage roll, then Amalia can uh, kill kill the last guard with uh, and you will lose the LP. So So yes, uh, that, that one is guard A, this one is guard D. What you can also do is you can sort of like push the the other guards away from Amalia, so Amalia will target guard A sooner. <clears throat> because it is possible that uh, the guards will parry Amalia's attacks or something. Um, also, also uh, Amalia can use a move called Dark Mode, or use an item called Dark Mode in this fight. And that will deal damage to all of the enemies. It's usually a good thing, or it's almost always a good thing. Um, and if if she does that, uh, then you can often finish these guys off with uh, fire and attack by telling Va telling one or friend to attack to save MP for the next fight. And you can if you, if you had low a low uh, MP values. Uh, then you can also kill this last guard with uh, just telling everyone to attack him. And that, w that way Balfir won't get a steal off, but it's better to... Like, the steal is usually a, just a potion, which is whatever.
But yeah, um... Yeah, there, and here's our first unskippable cutscene. And let's just skip that. You can't skip the cutscene. That's all that there is to that. So then, uh, this one. You want to pay attention to Vaughn's HP here. So, if Vaughn has like less than 200 HP, if, if one has very little HP, then Amalia will throw a potion now on Vaughn, which is nice, because she doesn't use your potions, she has her own. But, um... If Vaughn has, say... Bit, if, if, if she doesn't use a potion on Vaughn, then you want to use a potion on, with Balfiero on Vaughn. Otherwise, you would save the potion by having Balfiero use uh, first aid on himself. Anyway, you want to do it as soon as uh, Balfier is past uh, this point in on the map. Like, uh, you can keep eye on Balfier's dot on the map and do it or judge it by where you are. Yeah, just use the potion. And that is so we can go for this chest, which is either a leather shield or high potion. And then switch back to Balfier to get to initiate the fight uh faster also you can keep pay attention um to the mp values here uh, of france and Vaughn's. and uh you every fire cast every fire is 8 mp so you should switch so you should um switch your leader at the start you will switch your leader at the start of the next fight immediately and you should switch to the one who's closer to the next mp uh, next MP that's divisible by 8. Or if they are both very far, just switch to Fran, because Fran has better armor. Uh, but yeah. So in this case, for example, if these were the MPs, I would switch to Fran, because Fran has uh, 23 MP and Van has 24. And you need 24 MP for 3 fires. And you really want to get at least 3 fires off. And 32 is the next. Uh, if they had like say... Fran had 25 and Vaughn had... Or let's say Vaughn had 24 like he has now. And Fran had 30. Then I would switch to... Well then again I would switch to Fran. Because Fran even though Vaughn has less MP. Because with Fran I would be able to get the extra MP by running in circles. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so here, actually, Fran got enough L MP uh, for the third fire, third fire anyway. But I'm still, sw I think I'm still switching to Fran because, well, there's, you, you preferably want to switch to Fran if you, if you don't need one to gain MP. Because, uh, Fra like I said, Fran has better armor, so she will take less damage. So it's less likely for Amalia to stop and heal, um, heal her. Amalia, your goal in this uh, fight is basically to have Amalia solo one of the flans, and then kill the rest of rest of them with fire. So if she stops to use a potion, then you have to deal with the last flan yourself. Um, or at least half of it, and you usually don't have enough MP to gast for fires in this fight. Uh, Vaughn. So yeah, Vaughn has less HP, or yeah, less H typically less HP and better low slower arm or worse armor. Also, in you can see the battle position that Vaughn starts closer to this Fran, this Flan that Fran that does. And this flan is the one you want Amalia to be attacking. So, um, 
if you if you if you switch to Vaughn, the default default target might be the that flan. So you have to watch out for that. But if you switch to Fran, it's never that flan. So especially if you keep running backwards, like you should in at the start of the fight. So yeah, switching to Fran using fire with both Fran and Vaughn. So Amalia is now here uh, in the middle of two flans, which is usually the case. So this is the flan you want him or you want her to target, but sometimes she just she will always target the closest, and sometimes she will just start uh, using the second charging for this flan um, with her second attack. Either way, you want to with your next fire you want to target the one she's not targeting. So if she switches target to that guy, uh, kill this flan. Uh, if she keeps uh, killing this flan, which is preferable, then uh, target this flan. And also you can see here, I'll probably do it. Yep. I, I pushed the flan a little bit so it was further away from Malia. That's uh, one little trick you can do. And if you're if you don't have enough MP, uh, you can keep running in circles uh, to get enough MP for the third or fourth cast. And yeah, then you can see Amalia is soloing the one flan. She usually can't quite kill kill the flan before um, before we are done with the three first flans. But that's okay. Usually, then one attack from Fran and Vaughn will do the trick. But now Fran is actually blind, so that's a little bit annoying. So Fran might miss with this attack, which he did. So that cost a little bit of time, and then I needed another attack from Amalia to finish it off. Then there is another chest over here, over in that corridor, just like there was in uh, the other one. Uh, you can go for it if you want to. It's I I think it's a with current strats it's a little bit too uh, much out of the way for me most of the time. I still pick it up if my guild is horrible, but um, typically I skip it. But you would also you would again use first aid with Balfir to uh, do a warp. But oftentimes I don't get it. But if you're unsure about your guild. You can go for it. It's either a dagger or phoenix down. Both of which dagger sells for 100 gil and phoenix down is 250 gil. Because you don't have to buy a phoenix down. But this chest is more... Is, this chest is a worse chest than the one I just talked about. But it's much more in the way. So it's... So this chest I would recommend always grabbing. It's a 50-50 phoenix down or red fang. Uh, Phoenix down is 250 gil again, and Red Fang is pretty much worthless. It's 10 gil, 10 gil, so totally not worth it. And then just keep every enemy in the screen. And then uh, finally, you want to kill this this Gigantoad. I forgot in my PB to kill this Gigantoad. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine if you uh, skip it or forget to kill it, like in what I did in my case. I just like to kill it for the money and LP. But I didn't this time because I forgot. But I would recommend killing it. It's only one LP and a little bit of money, so it's not a big deal. But here you want to switch, turn on get France Gambits and turn off Balfiers. And then tell Balfier to use first aid right about here. Uh, if you did the warp and have Balfier as your leader, I would recommend not doing this uh, warp. And definitely don't do it if you're on ATB weight. Uh, it's not worth it. You can just you can do uh, the next fight with Fran lead just fine. I just like I think Balf Balfier and Fran have the same armor, but Balfier has slightly more HP. So I like I like leading with Balfier. Also, Balfier has a chance to block in this next fight. 
So I, I think Balfier lead is the best for that fight. You can lead with any character, it's fine. The fight is pretty much the same, but I think Balfier lead is most optimal. And doing this little warp is pretty much the same time as touching the crystal and not doing the warp. But you want to touch the crystal anyway, for uh, HP and to get rid of blind, slow, whatever you might have. So now there's fire main. Uh, fire main is a, a fire boss. So, and there's a water effect uh, in the field. I wonder how we can take advantage of that. Well, the answer is simple. You flee to the water and lure ball, lure fire main in the into the water, where he takes more damage. It might be double damage. I'm not sure. But he takes more damage in water. And he also can't use fire or bushfire. Which are his two most deadly attacks. Uh, either, but the downside of that is that uh, fire main likes teleporting back to the center. Either way, Balfir is one of the biggest RNG trolls in this run. Uh, if he teleports a lot then you just lose time and there's nothing you can do about it. But uh, you tell you start the fight by telling both Vaughn and Baltier to attack. And because Vaughn's and Baltier's gambits are off, they will keep attacking as long as, Balf as Fire Main is a valid target. Now, Balfier, or Fi Fire Main becomes invalid target if, you, if he teleports. So that means that if he's in the middle of teleport, when... Uh, Vaughn and Balfir are supposed to talk, start their next attacks, the attacks will get cancelled. Or they will they will not start them and you will have to tell them to use attacks again. Bran and Amalia have nearest visible gambits, so they will just start automatically uh, attacking whenever Fire Main is on the screen. And there you can see he's teleporting in his place, which is one of the annoying things, but at least he's not teleporting to the center, which he is something which is something he also likes to do. And uh, what I, what I typ typically like to do in this fight is that uh, Ash and Vaughn, they can both knock back uh, Fire Main, and I believe Balfir can as well, but I'm not sure. Or Balfir might as well, I'm not sure. But I like to position Balfir so that uh, he is in between Fire Main. And the closest set of dry land, which is in this case would be uh, these stairs. And that way, if if um, Amalia and Vaughn push Fire Main into that 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 dire that direction, Balfir will be blocking Fire Main a little bit, and Fire Main will not get pushed as far back or as close to the uh, stairs. But there he got to the stairs immediately. But then he used Rush and immediately got back. And uh, for sh just to make sure, I just uh, I uh, flee there to make sure that Fire Main is out of out of the dry land, uh, because when, if if he's on dry land when he when his HP is below eighty percent, he will immediately use bushfire. Otherwise, he will not use bushfire until he's at like about half HP, when he will, and that's the first time he can actually teleport to the center to do bushfire. But yeah, you try to keep him in the water because he takes more damage and can't use bushfire. He can combo and do stuff like rush and things, but the longer you can, the better. And when he teleports to the center like this, I you first flee so to stop everyone from trying to follow him to the uh, dry land. Otherwise, if they if they keep attacking, they will. They might follow Fire Main to the dry land, and then try, Fire Main will try, will attack them, and then uh, he will not get back to the water. So that's why you want to flee, and then you start uh, using attack with Balthier or charging up attack, so that Balthier will be charging attack while while the bush Fire Main teleports back, and then you you have Vaughn ready to attack as soon as uh, Fire Main is back, so. Typically, Fireman gets the bushfire off before you can actually target him. 
And bushfire is annoying because not only it deals damage to everyone, it also poisons everyone. But after he's back, you want to uh, use Talvan to attack him again. And now he starts trolling by teleporting to the center. And after he's like below 10-20% HP, uh, then he likes then he can use another bushfire. Or even sooner if the fight goes really wrong. But this fight went fairly well and there was only one bushfire. But he can keep teleporting back and forth between uh between uh dry land and uh, water and that will be super annoying and w will waste a lot of time. But I, I, uh, there are also, uh, f there's four or five cutscene skips after fire main and the seven second rule works here, although I tend to forget. But I believe this is a good time to do another pause. And uh, this one was a little bit shorter, but I need to use the bathroom. So, uh, and this is a good time to stop. So I'll see you soon.